today, we're going to examine the topic of linear independence. So formally, a set of vectors v1 through vk is called linearly dependent if at least one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. And otherwise, the set is called linearly independent. So this applies only to sets of sides greater than 2, because if there's just one vector and it equals 0, it's linearly dependent, and if it's not 0, then it's linearly independent. So geometrically, say we have a vector A and a vector B that are collinear, um, or scalar multiples of each other, then they're linearly dependent, because they're linear combinations of each other. Um, as another example, say we have a vector u, which is 1, 2, so 1, 2, and v, which is negative 1, 3, um, so, um, then the set uv is linearly independent because u and v are not collinear and not linear combinations of each other, but if we have a vector w, which is 3, 1, then the set u, v, w is linearly dependent because w equals 2u minus v. Um, so mathematically, we can also say that a set of vectors is linearly dependent uh, if and only if, if this equation holds um, c1, v1 plus c2, v2, all the way through c, k, v, k equals 0 where c1 through ck are scalars, not all of which are zero. So this also means that in order for a set of vectors to be linearly independent, then if this equation holds true, all of the scalars c1 through ck are zero. Um, so for a proof, suppose that a set of vectors is linearly dependent, um, which means at least one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. So say v1 can be written as a linear combination subtract v1 from both sides of this equation, we're left with 0, 0 equals negative v1, which we can also write as negative 1 times v1, um, plus d2 v2 all the way through dk vk. And so this equation is a form of this condition, where scalars c1, v1, all the way through ck vk sum up to 0, and not all of them are 0, because here we have a negative so this satisfies the proof in this direction. And in the other direction, suppose that this equation holds true um, with at least one non-zero coefficient. Um, so say if c1 does not, c1 does not equal zero. Um, so then we can solve for v1, uh, solve this equation for v1, so move all the other terms to the other side, um, and divide by c1. So we can have v1 equals negative c2, sorry, can you see that, um, over c1, v2, minus all terms, and they're all divided by c1, which is valid because we assume that c1 does not equal 0. Um, and so now we've written v1 as a linear combination of all the other vectors, Oops, sorry, it should be. Okay. Uh, which satisfies the proof. So linear independence is an important concept in linear algebra.